Why do you think the sun has a diverse effect on people's mood? It's all a seasonal adjustment disorder, right? I think, I think people often associate warm weather with positive memories. Like if you get up at the right time of day and go out and get some sunlight in your eyes, it's meant to help with your whole brain function. You can be up in life or down in life at any time of year. The word came out, TikTokticity. <laughs> I didn't know I'd said it. And Lee picked up on it. Inspiration Nation, hello. It's not Lee Kemp, it's Ryan Boniface yet again, because Lee always seems to take holidays. Back again with another week on the podcast here with Joe this week, just Joe and I. Um, Lee is off, I assume, sunning it up in, um, is it Croatia? Is Dubrovnik in Croatia? Well, I don't know, but it's definitely Croatia, isn't it? Yeah. I'm not Let's sure exactly where. I think you said a really posh place that he's probably going to. It is in Croatia. Yeah, he's on to Dubrovnik because he went to the Game of Thrones thing. Oh, because that was all uh, that was all done in was all based then? out of Dubrovnik. Yeah. Oh wow. Um, that's cool. He's off southern off for his summer holidays. Um, hopefully, he'll be back. Is he back next week? It was next week. He was back. Yeah, he's it? next week. He's back. Yeah. He'll be back here. He'll be back next week. If you prefer Lee's dulcet tones, he's back next week. If not, you can do with uh, make do with Joe and I. We'll look after you. We um, can look after you all. Yeah, definitely. We're back again for another week. Joe, as per usual, on his TikTok. Um, if you want to come and check that out, that is Jnoyer underscore Inspiration Nation on TikTok. We go live usually every Tuesday, but I had to postpone yesterday. So apologies at about half past five, six o'clock. Um, but if you follow Joe, you'll tend to get a notification when he goes live, because I do. Um, otherwise, we're on social media at listen to in, which is listen T-O-I-N, not the number, excuse me, not the number two. Um, yeah, we're on YouTube. Jose Neuer, Inspiration Nation. Basically, if you just stick Joe's name into Google, it'll all come up. I think there's a link tree now, I think you mentioned, isn't there? Yeah, it's a big link tree now, so you can get yeah. everything so there. If you find If you find Joe yeah. on TikTok or on Instagram, there'll be a link tree that gives you all of his uh, all of his associated pages where you can get all of us. Fantastic. If you are listening on uh, your podcast supplier, um, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, wherever, so please leave us a review. Um, Preferably we'd like a five-star one, but we'll take any feedback that you've got for us. And if you listen on YouTube, then drop us a like as well and a subscription if you're not already. Um, but yeah, on, I'm not going to do Lee's affy wheel of conversation because <laughs> it's, it's embarrassing. But um, it's me this week. I am the, I am the topic bearer. Um, and I'm going to talk about, and if you live in the UK, you'll know all about this. Um, we're going to talk about the current situation with the weather the last couple of weeks um have actually we've actually had for once an extended british summer usually we get a day or two and that's that but um at the back end of back end of july yeah would have been the back end of july we had what, what we what we were calling a pretty big heat wave and we had temperatures of 40 degrees celsius um which has actually been unheard of in the uk before um i think it was caused by some air that had been moved off of Africa, I think, and blown round, and it just caused a, a heat mass. Well, I'm, I'm not gonna, a meteorologist. I'm bow to your scientific knowledge there, Ryan, because I've got no idea. It's not a meteorologist either. That's one that looks at stars and planets. <laughs> uh, I can't remember what the, um, what, the, what the formal phrase is for a weather man or woman. but I'd say you're on the right lines. Yeah, there expert. or thereabouts. But um, even this week, today's been really warm. Yesterday was warm. It's, it feels like a, a good summer, but the heat in the UK, if you live here, as you all know, is, is terrible compared to somewhere more tropical because it's a drier heat and you just feel hot and sticky all day. And essentially, I want to talk about how the weather can affect your mood mm. and your current behaviours and how you feel about life and um, everything, really. Yeah. People depict... Uh, being down or suffering with depression with having a dark cloud over their head, right? I think yeah. I've heard, have you heard that phrase before? 100%, yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. Um, I definitely have. And um, it kind of denotes that if, that if that goes one way, then if it's sunny, 
then everyone's, you know, everyone's going to be happy. That's the way that logic is perceived to me, which obviously isn't the case. But why do you think it's... Why do you think the sun has a diverse effect on people's mood? Cool. That's a difficult one. Or why do you think um, the summer has a direct effect on people's mood? Well, I think it does. And uh, I just want to say a big shout out to people who have been liking, Millie's been liking on the, on the TikTok. So thank you for everybody that's joined and followed. Summer99558, thank you for following. Join my journey to 10,000 followers. Thank you. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you. So, yeah. Yeah, so... Why is the sun? I mean, the thing is, I think, um, isn't that there that um, sad, sad uh, disorder, seasonal adjustment disorder, right? And that's to do with light and different things. People have lamps and they put it on their faces and it's meant to help with de depression. Um, so why does the sun help? I think that, so I, I, I've been listening to a few podcasts and uh, talk, they talk about um, like the circadian rhythm and things like that and and you know they talk about and i'm not an expert i just things that i've listened to which have been i think really helpful for me like if you get up at the right time of day and go out and get some sunlight in your eyes it's meant to help with your whole brain function and there's a guy called andrew huberman podcast and he's very scientific with brain science and he talks about you know the circadian rhythm and you know we we live on a lot of artificial light um and actually getting out and getting proper light is actually really really important so to answer your question, how does sun affect it? I think it's because we are meant to be outside and that because we spend a lot of time inside, it can affect people's psychology, I think. I think um, for me, I always used to feel, I still feel better when the sun's out. I like it when the sun's out, but it's not, it's now something I've learned. Um, I've learned to adjust now because, you know, but as we talked about a story, I had anxiety, depression many years ago and I had to learn to adjust my mental state through tools I use and one of them is not to rely on the weather and actually one of the podcast episodes we did is take your weather with you I'm sure we did it where yeah. you know we create should create our own environment so environment like you know things around you that lift you up that you know not doesn't to not relying on the weather to to boost you but I do get it um, and I think there's natural like isn't there vitamin d or something from the sun that's helped the sunlight yeah you, right um, so all those things play into it and I think you know your diet, how you how you are, exercise, all that thing feeds. And if and if you and if you don't and if you if you don't look after yourself, I think you do are susceptible to it. So I think, I think when winter comes, I think that's why people do feel more sadder um, or depressed, or it brings on those feelings. So as an effect, I think it definitely makes me feel happier. <laughs> so I can't tell personal experience. Um, so you know, guys on TikTok as well, let me know whether you feel these things when it's summertime's over. Um, you know, do you start to feel a bit, you know, but you know, difficult, difficult. I mean, some people, like, I've spoken to my sister and she says she tries to appreciate every season, like autumn because the leaves and winter because it's frosty and you can wrap up and have a glass of wine. And I think it's a big thing in that to appreciate every season. But I think I really do love the summer. Um, so in answer to your question, why do people feel that? I think it's a matter, a lot, a lot of different things. Uh, I think, you know, I associate a lot of good things with the summer going out. You know, play tennis, go and have a nice, go and meet friends, going outside, staying outside longer, 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 longer evenings, and not going to bed so early potentially. Though I tend to go to bed at the same time. <laughs> but that's my answer to you, really, is that I think it's just really around um, uh, it's to do with our natural physiology as humans that 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 it affects us because it's part of the planet. That's all I think. What do you think? Um, I think you're right, um, but I. You know, personally, my favorite season is um, or time of year is kind of autumn um, where you still have a bit of daylight in the evenings, but it's it's cool enough that you need to um, put a jumper on. And um, I like those kind of warmer colors, you know, the browns and the reds and the and that kind mm. of thing. So for me, my personal favorite um season is autumn it's not too warm it's not too cold similarly spring's quite you know it's a lot greener than than browner at that time of year but um but that kind of that kind of cool cooler but not too cool warm but not too warm weather longer evening shorter morning still that kind of thing is um it's kind of up my street but you know i think i think people often 
associate warm weather with positive memories because even as a child if you're going to draw a happy picture the first thing that most children will draw is the sun if you think about it i remember drawing pictures as a kid and the first thing i'd do is draw a little circle in the top corner of the page and paint it yellow and put little lines on it. it's the first thing that i always drew i think it's the first thing that probably most young people do because that's how we're wired we're hardwired to to understand that summer is a fun and enjoyable time we're not hardwired to say that winter is a boring and unenjoyable time by any means but i think you can't have one without the other i think if you because we really push on summer there is has to be a bit of flack with winter right so yeah yeah um that's kind of how i see it. i think we're hard, hardwired that way i think the reason i brought the subject up was to suggest that just because it's summer it doesn't mean that you're not allowed to feel down if you are um just because it's summer doesn't mean that you have to be happy all the time doesn't mean you have to be out every day doing something with friends doesn't mean you have to be at the beach it doesn't mean anything like that at all you can still have those those quiet days where you need to be inside and that's perfectly fine um but i think i think it's important to remember that you can be up in life or down in life at any time of year. Um, however, there is, and I don't want to get too, too down this path, but there is, um, you know, the first Monday after the new year is generally quite a bad day, right? I think they call it, is it Blue Monday? I think that's referred that's to. It. You referenced it before. I didn't know it existed until you said yeah, it. Yeah, it's the, it's the most common day, mm. time of, day of the year that, I'm not sure if it's just men or if it's everyone, but it's the most common day of the year that people will unfortunately commit suicide. Um, People, you know, if they're feeling down, will have will get through Christmas and New Year because they've got families. Generally speaking, they've got something to look forward to in terms of Christmas and then New Year, and then they realise, a, I might have overspent at Christmas and I can't afford to live, or b, you know, mm. I've got nothing happy that I want to live for now. I don't want to get on this path too much because I don't want it to be that type of podcast. But you, people often, as I said at the start, often often relate being down with a cloud over you or thunder and lightning or it being dark and that kind of feeling um but i'm sure there's some there, there'll be people definitely that are born on that first monday of every year and mm. it's one of their happiest days of the year so i think you know a lot of people especially on social media these days and i say that as if i'm 50 like joe and depressed about social media and think and not depressed about social media but but i was before social media and things like that but you know there'll be what was the point i was making i was making a good point um i think sorry i think social media will have you believe that just because the sun's out and all your mates are at a pub garden or there's weddings and christenings and social gatherings and you know the world cup should have been on this summer um but we've also had the 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 ladies euros which you know england did fantastically well in um mm. but we did come home on, there yeah 100 percent um just because you know it is summer it doesn't mean that you have to be doing this it doesn't mean you have to feel good about things and i think it's just important to to just acknowledge that um and not and not to beat yourself up if you are having a bit of a um crap time um i don't know if you've got any thoughts for that joe yeah, I think um, I think a lot of it, and again, this depends. Again, and I've talked about this before on on social is that um, your social media is so it's not going away. And you said you know you get pictures of people, happy people, Christians, birthdays, and I think this is why it's important to have a look at your social media. And I said this before about you know putting putting things in there that are going to lift you up. Whatever lifts you up is it F one? Is it whatever so you don't always have if the things that things if you if you find that that, that seeing other people having christenings and all that is a real you don't like it it's making you feel bad if that's the thing that that does it for you then why don't you just mute that and follow stuff that makes you lift you up like so i think it can and i think social media is so powerful it's such a powerful thing and it's not going anywhere that we can use it to our advantage and um talking about the weather and and things like that i think it's important that you know that you just be selective about what you let in you know and if it is those things like christenings and things like that, like, like ryan said you know it's okay 
that you don't feel okay in the summer. And I think, you know, you see everybody having fun, but you know, when you see everybody having fun, it doesn't necessarily mean they're having fun. Yeah. Right. There could be a lot more going on apart from those pictures, those videos, you don't know what's happened five minutes afterwards, five minutes before the day before that, the day after that, because that's just a moment in time. And there could be any reason of number of reasons for that photo, for that video that could be uh, put up for pretense, could be put up for anything, but it could be genuine. I'm not saying it's not, but I think we got, we can't read too much into those pictures. And if they make you feel in a certain way, then do something about it and dial into things that make you feel happy um, and bring you up. So I suppose you should really talk about thinking about the weather and, and depending on the moods and what you said, is, I suppose what things bring us up, you know, what things, someone asked you, Grant, what things, when you're not feeling great, which all happens to all of us, what sort of things make you feel better? Like what would you tend to do? It's funny you mention this because I was going to talk about this as a, as a, as this kind of the second part of the podcast, actually. Oh, is it? Okay. Um, and I want to be careful how I phrase it because I don't want to deter from anything. But it's important that your happiness isn't derived out of just one thing, or at least one thing that you don't have control over. Now, what I mean by that is, use Joe's example, if you're only happy because the F1's on, then you're going to struggle for 29 weeks of the year, because there's only 23 races this year, or 22 races, because I think they got rid of Russia. So you're going to struggle for 29, 30 weeks of the year, right? However, that doesn't mean that it can't be something to help bring you up. And it is something that if I'm ever feeling down and I know there's a race this weekend or whatever, it'll, it'll push me to start making myself feel better about things. But it isn't the only thing. The football's back this week. Premier League football's back this week. Um, and that's, that's going to be great. You know, I've, I've missed football. I, luckily, we've had the Euros over the last month or so. But I've missed football, as I think most, people, most football fans do over the summer. Um, and it's going to be, going to be good to, to have that about um but i think if if you can it's always important to try and have multiple things and we talk about and lee talks about this all the time but he talks about it in a different context he talks about having um he talks about buffets a lot mm. he has buffets of as he's called it, buffets of information where he just picks yeah. for things Buffet that he needs life or whatever he, yeah. that's it he, he'll correct us if he listens to this and comes back next week and i've completely mm. bodged mm. what he calls it but yeah you should, as people, and I say you collectively as the world and whoever listens to this, you should have um, a buffet of things that, that help you feel happy. Don't make you feel happy. They shouldn't make you feel happy, but they should help you feel happy. You should feel happy because those things give you a reason to be happy rather than it's only that that makes you happy. Because that's when you become, in my opinion, uh, obsessed with certain things that could even be a person and that's not healthy either but we should have a buffet of things uh i've got a film series i want to watch i've got a tv series There's a new tv series out football's back f1 the us open tennis to joe's credit is on in a few weeks i'm sure mm -hmm. um it's going to be christmas soon i say soon it's four and a half months or whatever but <laughs> you know what i mean you know yeah, what yeah. i mean it's going to be yeah, christmas yeah. not before you know it you know yeah, it's, yeah. If you've got kids and they're quite young, it might be their first Halloween to go trick or treating if that's your thing. It's all about having things to look forward to that give you a reason to be happy. They're not the sole purpose that you're happy, but they give you a reason to, to, to push yourself on that happy road or happier road. By contrast, what comes up must come down, in my opinion. Yeah. And again, I don't want to focus too much on the negatives, but there will also be a buffet of things that if you dip into it too much will cause you reason to detract from that happiness. Somebody might have a funeral coming up or they might be having trouble at work and they might be at risk of re redundancy or 
they might have a, a scary doctor's appointment that they don't want to go to because they don't want to talk about things. And it's all about having that balance because as with everything, people will only ever focus on the negatives, whether that's a review of a food place or um, a review of a food. People won't tell you if something was good, but they'll definitely tell you if something was bad. They'll go out of their way to tell you something was bad, right? I think that's just common human psychology. Again, if Lee was here, he would tell me that's, um, what's that book called? Neuro-linguistic NLP. NLP. He'll yeah. tell me it's NLP and there's a specific phrase for it that I should know, mm -hmm. but I don't because I forgot to borrow the book off him and read it. Mm -hmm. But um, the human psyche will tell you to focus on the negatives and they, and they will always be there. What, what comes up must come down. That's the way life works. Um, but as long as you have those, those happy things that you can tap into to, to detract your mind from that and put you on a happier path, then that's a win in my book. That's, that's what we should all be aiming for. Um, you know, if, if you've got money problems, I promise you, I promise you now, Bill Gates and Elon Musk still wake up and have problems. If you've got, you know, if, if you've got work problems, you know, I think the UK has got its highest number of jobs ever at the minute. So if you are going to get made redundant, then things will come for you. Um, and it's just, that's just, you know, life will always deal you a bit of a shit hand. Um, you as people and we as people will always find a way to better that. And I think that's, that's the message I wanted to, to, to give in this podcast today. Yeah, it's really good. I think it's a good few things in there. I think um, you can't ever escape problems ever, ever. And you're right. You know, life is always going to throw you something. Sometimes it's great. Sometimes it throws you great stuff. Like not always problems. It'll throw you something. Oh, I didn't, wasn't expecting that. Yep. Maybe it's a little windfall, maybe it's, you know, whatever. But then it's sometimes going to kick you in the balls, punch you in the face. You know, it's going to do it. And I think, you know, we have to be prepared for that. And that's hard. And that's something <clears throat> that I struggle with. With depression, I wasn't really prepared for the punching in the face. I, always really, I was really quite, you know, I still am a positive person, but I didn't think it was like, it was, this is more realistic to say that yeah you can still be positive but you know there's always going to be problems and i wanted a world where there was no problems and this is not realistic because there's always problems and like you said whether you're bill gates whether you're elon musk those would be a different level of problem yeah it would be a different type like it may be that you know bill gates is this investment's gone or whatever or for tesla you know we're having to put the price of the teslas up so whatever there's something going on or production's fallen by whatever it might be right it's a different type of problem and you said a good thing, actually, you know, what must come up must come down. There's always a yin and the yang. There's always the up and down. And I think we have to recognize that it's like progress. Progress is not linear. Yeah. Life is not linear. It's up and down. It's squiggly. It's messy. And if you want to get from point A to point B, it's always going to be a little bit messy. And I was talking to my, my daughter the other night because she's doing a gig soon on Friday. We we're talking about that. We we're talking about, you know, just feeling a bit anxious about this gig and things go up and down and you know we all struggle with these ups and downs of life um but it's diving in like you said into the things that bring you joy and for my daughter is music for me it's you know doing this podcast and dear diving to set personal development and you know the other thing that i try and do is to be grateful for what i have and uh you know where our life is right now pretty good i mean i can come on here and talk to you you know and again i did do a little bit of video on, on gratitude practice and again i'm going to reference andrew huberman podcast about practicing gratitude because if it's something that you do practice it's a really good thing to do to think of actually a moment in your life and i don't think we do this enough think of a moment in your life where you did really well or someone said thank you for something and relive that moment and take the bits out of it or the story out of it and think what was it about that that was th that they, they thanked me for and if you relive that moment and can, you know, maybe it's a team member that said, oh, thanks for helping with with X, or it's a friend that you helped them out and they said, oh, do you know what, that really helped me out. That will actually, in the brain science, Andrew Huberman's brain science actually makes you feel happier. Um, and of course, life is not always happy. And I think we've got to be realistic. It's not, we're always going to be happy. It's about, like you say, having places we can go, do, doing things that bring us up. Um, and I think that's so important. 
And again, it's like a portfolio. Think of a sh- I don't have a shares portfolio, but if I did, and if I imagine someone like Warren Buffett has got amazing portfolio and it's a bit like the Buffett, the Buffett, Buffett or Buffet of life, <laughs> the Buffett of life. Maybe that could be a switch. Uh, Warren Buffett, one of the richest people on the planet with his head funds, whatever. But imagine he's got a load of investments. Some of them are going to go down. Some are going to go up. Ray Dalio is one actually hedge fund, massive hedge fund. Uh, and he's got a portfolio which balances out. So there's things are going to go down, things are going to go up and it's going to balance out in the end. And that, I think that's what we need to do with our lives. We need to like balance things out so that we've got a, a good return at the end. It's never going to be smooth. We need to prepare. We, we need to like, we know summer's going to be coming to an end. And if we know that autumn or winter or whatever season's coming, where we think it's going to be difficult, what are we doing to prepare now for that? What yeah. are you going to put in place? Like Ryan, you said, got the football coming up, tennis for me, potentially. I don't really, what, I don't watch it once in a while, but I watch it this year. But I, you know, I get it. But but finding things, you know, maybe, you know, I know Ryan, you love playing computer games. I love playing, I, I, I haven't played them lately. Maybe I should do that. My daughter's been playing Fallout 4 on the PlayStation 4. Maybe I should enjoy a bit of that. But anything that's going to do that, like maybe giving, you know, family members a call. I, I call my, my, my dad and my sister. I regularly contact them. And these things could be the preparation for you to like have some sort of resource you can draw on to when that time is coming. Because sometimes you get unexpected stuff. Like, as I said to you before, my mum passed away this year. That was unexpected. You know, I did we're not expecting that. But if you've built up, things like tools like I have and then you're it's not easy it's still not bloody easy it's drawing into those things so you can just get through the day yeah. and if you just if it's just you're a really low point you can just get through the day and make it to the next day that's a win yeah. and recognizing those small wins to say I felt really bad today but I made it through and I did you know I worked or I, I just got through the day that's a win. You need to recognize. I don't think we do don't recognize that thing in ourselves enough. Of course, we still need to be improved and stuff like that. But in that moment, we need to be kind to ourselves when we're feeling like that. To say we just need to bring ourselves back up. And when we're in a place where we're a bit better, we can go. Okay, what do I need to be better at? It's really knowing when to do those sorts of things. And so that's what that's what I thought, Ryan. That's what you sparked off of me when you were talking about all the things that you were talking about. You know, the ups and downs of life and. And when life's coming for you, because it comes for you really big um, sometimes, um, and we need to be prepared. Um, and so that's what I'd say, like with your socials, yeah. all that yeah. sort of stuff. But yeah, I don't, I don't think we're saying that, you know, if you have this this plethora of happiness, you're never going to feel sad because that isn't it at all. But oh, absolutely. it definitely, it, it, definitely yeah. it, it definitely gives you a reason to think slightly differently. Mm. Um, and it's okay to throw that routine out the window if something does come along that's that's catastrophic or something that's completely you didn't you didn't know was going to happen or anything like that it's okay to get it wrong for a while as long as you accept that a time will come where you need to get it right and i think that's important when were you saying to me ryan you're like uh when i took that you said oh you need to take a break like jose you and i think you i think you froze to it ryan and lee we emphasized it that yeah you need to take take two days off take two days off and so i've had a week off and sometimes you need to not do the same things, like you said. Like you need to do something a little different. Um, so, yeah, I, I I think I struggle with that a little bit because I get a little bit obsessed about things. Like, so I think you know sometimes taking a step back and just like I've I've you know even now I've not posted every day for a bit. I've taken a break from social for a little bit, but I'm coming back. But I'm coming back slowly. But that's good. I think it's just nice to sort of have that bit of freedom i think um yeah, yeah. but you know because we want to help people this is the whole point of doing the inspiration nation podcast there to help look in our perspective and this helps you is great you know take the buffet whatever works for you use that so yeah, yeah. yeah. so thanks ryan no it's been good, really mate. good it's been a really really good subject we are we are at our time limit so oh, blimey already I'm take i know i'm gonna take this opportunity to say uh thank you for listening um i'm gonna give a bit of a spiel as per usual um we are at on social media, listen to I N, listen T O I N. Um, if you want Joe, then if you go to his TikTok profile, if you're there, and then find his Instagram, there'll be a link tree, I believe, there that will give you a link to everything that you need. But essentially, if you just Google Jose Neuer, Inspiration Nation, uh, him, he and I, and Lee will all pop up and we'll all be there. Um, so feel free 
to give us a watch, give us a listen, give us an interaction. If you've got any suggestions for the podcast, let us know. We'll take them on board. Um, if you want to be interviewed, get in contact with us for any of those social media channels, and we'll definitely um, get in contact and, 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 and consider that as well. So by all means, um, feel free to reach out to us in any way you can. As I said earlier, if you listen to us on your, any of your podcast platforms, then drop us a thumbs up, drop us a like, drop us a review if you, uh, if you can, and a so, so wish. Um, otherwise, I think that's us. I think that's us joe unless you've got anything else yeah i just want to say thanks for the tiktokers thanks for uh, do you know what there's a brilliant I was, I, was, I was editing the podcast last week and um it was interesting that that this word came out tiktokticity oh, <laughs> i didn't know i'd said it and lee picked up on it and um and i think this is again for this tiktok piece that we're doing and i really want people to get on board with it because i want to create a a positive space on tiktok and social media in general because i think it, it's a really powerful tool Obviously, for toxicity is powerful, and you know we need more. We need more uh, positivity and more, you know, more more inclusiveness. I think on on these platforms where we can not feel judged and actually come along and, and share our challenges and share our successes and actually not tear each other down and lift each other up and help him with what we talked about today. Because I think these are important important spaces, and I think we need more spaces like this on. TikTok. We need more spaces like this to really, really help others come together, join together, and to create something that's really good for for everybody. Um, yeah. And you know, combat that. So, yes, yeah, so join the TikTok revolution. That's what I say. Indeed, indeed, come and join us. But um, yeah, I think that's pretty much us. So I'll give us a countdown. Go on, Ryan. I'll let you go to go for it, mum. Go for yeah. it. Yeah. Three, two, one. Inspiration, Inspiration Nation. We'll catch, catch you guys you next guys time. Later. I always want to know now what's your biggest takeaway. Don't forget to hashtag it with Inspiration Nation in the comments below and make sure you commit to action. Thank you for checking out. So you can catch all our other Inspiration Nation podcast episodes right over here. So go check them out. Also, don't forget to subscribe because that will tell you when your next video goes live by you hitting that amazing bell. So until next time, Inspiration Nation, and I'll see you right over there.